How can a Christian go to hell? The simple answer is he can't go to hell. And I'm going to give you some reasons why. Number one, he is a part of the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 13 says, For as the body is one, and hath made many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. When you get saved, you are baptized into the body of Christ, and this baptism has absolutely nothing to do with water. It has nothing to do with you getting baptized by a Church of Christ pastor. It is a spirit baptism and not water baptism. And you didn't know this, but the moment you believe the gospel, you were baptized into the body of Christ. So many things happened when you got saved, and the moment you got saved, you didn't realize it. And with this being said, for a Christian to go to hell, he would have to take part of the body of Christ with him. Since he is part of that body, then part of Jesus Christ would be burning in hell for eternity if the Christian was to go to hell. And of course, someone will say a Christian can get out of the body. And by saying this, they will have to amputate part of Jesus Christ's body to put the Christian in hell. And there is scriptural proof that nothing can separate the Christian from the love of God. The holiness crowd, the church of God crowd, the church of Christ, or anyone else who believes in eternal insecurity will quickly say God loves them even after they are put out of the body of Christ. But Romans eight thirty eight through 39 says, Nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ. If you're saved, then you're in Christ. If you could be separated from the love of God in Christ, then you make God a liar. Romans eight thirty eight through 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So to put a Christian in hell is to put part of the body of Christ in hell. And next, if a Christian goes to hell, then he is going to have to fall back under the wrath of God. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. According to that verse, why is the wrath of God on a person? Because they aren't believing on the Son. Even if a Christian starts to live a life of sin, that doesn't mean he is going to stop believing on Jesus Christ. And even if he did stop believing, the Bible says he would still be saved. The Bible says, lets us know even if we stop believing, he abideth faithful. He can't deny himself. And if you say a Christian can lose salvation and you put the Christian in hell, you put him under the wrath of God. When the verse plainly said, he that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. And hell is the place of God's wrath. If you see verses like Deuteronomy 32:22, it says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell. Revelation 14:10, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So, Hell is where the wrath of God is. You make God a liar again by putting the believing saint under the wrath of God that is for the unbeliever. Romans 5 9 says, Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 1 Thessalonians 4, 5 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Next we see that if you put the Christian in hell, you cause God to break his own command. 
as a Christian, I'm not supposed to marry, shack up with, or join up with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? If you put me in hell, then I am going to live and wallow around with a bunch of Christ-rejecting sinners in a lake of fire one day. And if you are saved and you go to hell, then you're going to have to go to hell believing in Jesus Christ. That verse said, What communion hath light with darkness? If you're saved, then you're light. First Thessalonians 5.5 5, For ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Colossians 1.27 to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christ is light, and Christ is in you. And look what the Bible says about hell. Second Peter 2 4 For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. If hell is darkness, and the lake of fire is called outer darkness, and you put the Christian in hell, then hell won't be darkness anymore. The Christian has something living in him that would light up hell. If you put the Christian in hell, then you have a sinless people, a part of hell's population, shacking up with unbelievers, living in the same place as unbelievers, wallowing around in a lake of fire with unbelievers. If you're saved, then in God's eyes, doctrinally, in the doctrinal sense, you have no sin. First John 5.18 says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Okay, if you're saved, what part of you is begotten of God? Not your flesh. Your flesh doesn't get born again. The regeneration is spiritual. Every man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. When you get saved, you get a live spirit. Your soul will no longer have sin applied to it after you get saved. And this is because of the spiritual circumcision spoke about in Colossians 2.11. And this is one of the greatest truths in the Bible for eternal security that you'll ever learn. And the moment you get saved, God performs an operation on you called the spiritual circumcision. He cuts your soul loose from your flesh. So now every time you walk in the flesh and sin, it isn't applied to your soul like it was before you got saved. Therefore, you have no sin applied to your soul. And if you were to die and go to hell, then you would be the only sinless soul in hell. You would be living in eternity with unbelievers. You would be cussing God with unbelievers. And you would be light in a dark place with children of darkness. Children of darkness don't mix with children of light. And next for a Christian to go to hell, the Lord Jesus Christ's blood would have to be counted as insufficient. And maybe at one point you have been to the store and when you got to the checkout counter, you found out your card had insufficient funds. And this won't happen when it comes to your eternal life and your time to die. You will make it home to heaven because the blood is sufficient to pay for all of your sins. And God's wrath for every sin committed was poured out on the Lord Jesus Christ. First John 2.2 2 says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And this means that Jesus died for every sin committed by Charles Manson, Alesta Crowley, Eminem, Jay-Z, Barack Obama, Hitler, Saddam Hussein, or any other wicked person you could name. And if his blood would pay for all their sins, then how would it not pay for your sins, yourself, past, present, and future? The average person hasn't done nowhere near as much wicked stuff as the people mentioned. I mean, have you murdered a million people like Hitler? Have you destroyed as many lives through music as Eminem? Have you corrupted 
the world as much as Alistair Crowley? Do you think God isn't going to keep you saved if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus' blood is definitely sufficient to pay for sins past, present, and future. Re Revelation 1.5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Acts 20.28 20, says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So Jesus Christ, he's paid for every sin, past, present, and future. But to get that payment applied to yourself, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lost people, their, their sins have been paid for, but they're rejecting the payment. And how foolish is that? But if you're saved, you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus Christ died so that you could have life. He wants all men to come to repentance. Do you think Jesus is going to let a child of God go to hell even though he accepted the payment for sin? We aren't kept saved by our works. The blood is sufficient to pay the price and you don't have to pitch in on the payment. You get the righteousness of Jesus Christ as a free gift. The moment you get saved, your own righteous deeds have no part in the matter of salvation. And did Jesus Christ die for no reason at all? Galatians 3.3 3 says, Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Meaning you're saved. Are you now going to be kept saved and made perfect by living right in the flesh? Galatians 2.21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Meaning, if you can live a good life and do good works and get righteousness from that to go to heaven, then why did Jesus Christ even die? If you have the blood of Jesus Christ presently applied to your soul, then you have eternal life right now. In John 3.36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God on him. So if you're saved, you presently have everlasting life. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, meaning right now. And you're not waiting to get it because you presently have it. If it is everlasting now and you can lose it tomorrow, then it was never everlasting. It was temporary until the time you sinned. There are so many things a Christian would have to reverse for him to wind up in hell. And the closest a Christian will ever get to hell is when Jesus Christ comes back with them at the second advent. Because there's going to be a lake of fire on earth in the millennial kingdom that was formed out of the fire from the second advent. And that's talked about in Isaiah 34. And only then they will be on the winning side. So they're not going to have to worry about going to hell or burning in hell. And then the other time you'll be close to hell is when you're at the great white throne judgment and death and hell is called up to the great white throne to be cast into the lake of fire. But you're never going to be burned by the flames of hell. And at the second coming, if you got close to the flames, you're going to be in a glorified body that can't be burned. But if you're not saved, then the Bible says the wrath of God is abiding on you. In John 3.36 you're not going to live forever. You're going to die one day and face a judgment. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You're going to die. There's no way out of it. You're not going to live forever. Even if a transhumanist made himself his own counterfeit glorified body, he's still going to die. The Bible says all men are going to die. And if you die in your sin, then you're going to spend eternity in hell, in a lake of fire. But Jesus Christ gave us a way out. 
And that way out is through the gospel. 1 Corinthians fifteen three and 4 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died for your sins. Because Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says, When we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You're ungodly. You're a sinner. You need to see yourself as a sinner. And you need to quit relying on your own self-righteous good deeds to make it to heaven. Maybe you think that you're okay because you're living a good life. You need to turn from your own self-righteousness. Realize that righteousness isn't going to save you and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you will come to Jesus Christ right now as a guilty sinner, rely on Him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, then you can be saved and have eternal life. Jesus Christ isn't going to turn away a sinner who wants to come to Him and believe on Him. So no matter what you've done, you can be saved and have eternal life.